Welcome to Spine Academy. In this video, we're going to provide an overview of the symptoms that we see with cervical spondylosis. This is an excerpt from a course which more fully covers the different symptom patterns that are encountered with cervical spondylosis. If you're interested in seeing the full course, we've left a link in the description. It's very important to understand the symptoms of cervical spondylosis in an organized way. Whether you're a patient trying to understand your own symptoms and make sense of them, or you're a clinician of some sort trying to understand and break down the symptoms that your patient is having, it's important to kind of think about where the symptoms themselves can come from. In the cervical spine, here you can see very nicely, we're focused on this particular area of the spine, so the neck of course can cause neck pain. And as we have covered in prior chapters, arthritic changes here can cause symptoms from of, of neck pain, but of cause symptoms from pressure on the nerves in the spinal cord. And that's what we're gonna drill in on a little bit more. This video here will give you a better sense of the relationship between the brain, the spinal cord, and the spinal nerves themselves. We have covered the fact that the spinal cord itself runs up and down from the brain downwards. There are branches called spinal nerves, and you can see that there's one leaving on the right and one leaving on the left here at each of these levels. The spinal cord is like a tree trunk. It conducts all the signals from, in the case of a tree, from the ground all the way up into the branches, out to the leaves. Here, the spinal cord conducts signals from the brain down through the spinal cord into the branches that are called spinal nerves that then descend further into other nerves and into a rich network that goes all the way out to your fingertips in the arms but down even into your legs. So the spinal cord in the neck will of course even affect symptoms in your chest, abdomen, down into your legs. The relationship between these structures, so here you can see the spinal column, surrounds the spinal cord and the spinal nerves. So arthritic changes here, whether it involves the disc or the bone spurs in the front or the joints in the back here, ligament in the back there, Arthritic changes here can cause pressure on some of these structures, and that's really what gives rise to two of the very important categories of symptoms that we see. This MRI scan shows some arthritic changes, and here you can see, again, this is a sagittal sequence. Here's some disc degeneration with some bulging at the C3-4 disc, 4-5 and 5-6 similarly have some disc material. There's some ligament thickening in the back, and the spinal cord is really being squeezed front and back by the arthritic or spondylitic changes, and as a consequence, you can even see there's a little bit of swelling in the spinal cord at that C3-4 level. When you think about arthritic changes, and we've covered this in prior chapters, these uh, frozen sections from Professor Wolfgang Rauschning really highlight the relationship between some of these arthritic changes and the structures around them. So here you can see the spinal cord in cross-section. This is a slice like this. There's a nerve leaving on the right side here. There's a nerve leaving on the left side there. You can see that the pressure on the nerve, which is related to this bone spur and some disc material pressing on this nerve can give rise to symptoms. And similarly, this disc material and some of the bone spurs here, even this ligament thickening, squeezing on the spinal cord here, you can see can cause symptoms related to that. The first two important categories of symptoms or patterns of symptoms that we see in cervical spondylosis, the first one we're gonna talk about is called cervical myelopathy. Cervical myelopathy is the clinical symptoms, it's a clinical constellation of symptoms that come from pressure and dysfunction of the spinal cord. That's called cervical myelopathy. Pressure and dysfunction of the spinal nerves is the second category that we're gonna talk about, and that is called cervical radiculopathy. And we'll get into both of these in much greater detail in the coming uh, uh, minutes. This is a beautiful sequence that's or a slice again that's almost sagittal where you can see the arthritis and really it's worse at these levels. Like these are beautiful looking discs. These are quite degenerated. You can see some of the arthritis involving the, the joints in the back here as well. And of course, those structural findings involving the spinal column can cause neck pain. So the last category to talk about will be neck pain. So the symptoms that we're gonna talk about really fall into three categories that are important to kind of think about whether you're seeing patients or you are a patient yourself. Cervical myelopathy, cervical radiculopathy, and neck pain. And we'll get into those in greater detail now. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future content, we'd welcome them in the comment section below.